Hi there, I'm Janet Gershon Siegel and I'm the Lonely Writer. This is serious social media help for the independent writer, which is a writer who does not yet have an agent. I'm a master's degree candidate at Quinnipiac University and this is my capstone project. Today I'm going to be talking about blurbs, queries, teasers, and elevator pitches and what the differences are. Now blurbs are these short promotional pieces, you used to see them on the backs of books and you still do, but they can also be the copy you might read on an Amazon author or book page or the snippet even pulled by a search engine. The best ones are short, they are specific as to genre, they're open as to who the protagonist is, they are spoiler free, they're not a rehash of the first chapter or the entire plot, and they are neutral about the quality of the work. Now queries, on the other hand, are the cover letters that go along with your submission to a publisher or agent. They vary in length, but your basic job is to do what the recipient wants. If they want a particular font, if they want it as an attachment, or they want it to be in the body of the note, then you do what they ask. Rather than giving an example, it's probably best to just link to a successful modern query letter, which is here at writersdigest.com. Now imagine your work showcased in that manner. Change the genre, the character names, and you've got the bare bones of a query letter. Now one suggestion is to check quite a few successful query letters, particularly those that are new and in your genre, and if they are beloved by your actual target, then that's even better. Now keep in mind, the stuff that you put in your query may turn out to be your blurb with a little bit of trimming. Teasers are a little different. They are a bit longer, they are meant to generate excitement, but they often end with a question, although it's not necessary. Uh, think of how films are teased if you're stumped for ideas, such as, she was spoiled, rich, and beautiful until the Civil War ended it all. Scarlett O'Hara has lost nearly everything, but there's a rich man who's interested and he might even love her. Can she win Rhett Butler and save her beloved land, Tara? It's spoiler free. It's got an interesting hook, it's got a question at the end, and it doesn't rehash every single thing, but you still know what the genre is, you still have a good idea of the two main characters and how important they are. Now you've also got elevator pitches and they're both verbal and written. The verbal kind is when somebody says to you, you're a writer, what's your book about? You can't just stand there, you've got to be ready. So you could say something like, imagine if your comfortable and sheltered world had been destroyed by war. My book is about Scarlet. She's beautiful and spoiled, tended to by slaves. When the Civil War breaks out, her world ends, but she just might be a survivor after all. It's got a good hook. It's less than 50 words long. The person asking is been, has been given the basic plot, the name of the heroine, and a reason to want to know more. But written elevator pages are a little different. And that's because even if you're known for writing epic sagas, you should still have a few short stories in your mix. And the reason why is because if somebody asks you, I want to get to know what you say and how you write, but I don't want to commit to a 100,000 uh, page novel, then you need to give them a short story and say, here, this is a sample of how I, of how I work. Short stories are certainly a different skill set, but I think that they're very important. Timing. One of the constant amidst all of these formats is time. These are bits that should be very fast. The idea is to respect your reader or listener's time. Just like someone requesting your verbal elevator pitch doesn't want to hear everything and they don't want the entire backstory, they don't want to get your character steady, your average book buyer is not going to be reading the rehash of the plot when they're reading the back of a, of a novel. Instead, they want it something quick. They can glance at it in the checkout line or while waiting for the bus or for any other reason that they're, that they're browsing. So you need to unleash your, your inner editor and cut the fat big time from whatever you're going to be saying. I'll tell you from personal experience, when I was published, much of my query letter ended up as my blurb. It was blurb plus a short review. Very, very effective. Finally, this is Janet Gershon Siegel for The Lonely Writer, because an independent writer never has to be alone. Thank you so much for listening.